Into the Pit is the newest Fires of Freddy's game to release, and it honestly is one of the best Fires of Freddy's games to come out recently. However, one thing I noticed was that the main monster, Spring Bonnie or Pit Bonnie, whatever his name is, never seemed to be close enough to catching up to me whenever he was chasing me. Which led me to ask the question, is it possible to beat Into the Pit without running? Well, in this video, that's what we're going to find out. So what exactly are the rules for this challenge? Well, quite simply, I am not allowed to press the shift key at any point during my challenge. So you know what we have to do. So anyways, with that out of the way, was this challenge possible? Well, let's find out. The game starts with our dad dropping us off at Jeff's Pizza after looking at a dead possum. Ah yes, the perfect side before a meal. Fantastic. Then, Dad doesn't pick us up, and at a spot, we decide to hide in a ball pit in the back room, which is where the real game begins. We stumble out of the ball pit to see that we are in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which is packed with kids, some of which become our friends. This is based with the tutorial, where we learn the main mechanics, including running, which fortunately we won't have to run for, although at this point walking everywhere was starting to get annoying. Oh boy. We then learn how to hide and survive against the yellow rabbit, Suddenly, everyone starts screaming, we follow the rabbit who has killed some kids and attacks us, we push him off and the first chase begins. Which is stupidly easy. Great, so far so good. We come back to the real world where our dad scolds us for hiding, the rabbit eats him, takes over his body with everyone thinking that he is normal. So we then return to our house and the first night begins. So we are currently in our room and we decide the best thing to do is call our mother to tell her about dad's dealings. So we go to find the phone where we need to lure the rabbit out of our dad's room since that's where the phone is and he'd be snoozing. We hear a loud noise, hide for a bit, call our mum and meet her at the front door where she tells us to stop tripping. Afterwards we get locked in our room and have to escape the house. There's four ways to do this, each of which we can only use once before the rabbit locks you out of that way. You can either walk out the front door, unlock your window with a screwdriver, climb out the attic window with a rope, or grab a ladder into the attic and get out through the basement. Since the only two I could do was either the door or the ladder trick, I went with the ladder so I could use the front door when I got stuck. Afterwards, we head to the ball pit for our first real task of the night. So at the Freddy place, we find a child stuffed into an endoskeleton, and to get him out, we need to get a screwdriver, which is located in the basement. However, the basement needs a key. So to get the key, we have to go back into the normal world and make a deal with our boy Jeff to throw some trash at the mill to get the key, which is all easy to do without running, just a bit slow. Oh yeah, and Jeff gives us a flashlight, which we can use to find our way into the dark and for something else later. But we need to be looking out for batteries so we don't get screwed over later. Afterwards, we return to the pizza place, unlock the basement, get the screwdriver and free the child. And then we get attacked by the rabbit again. And once again, we can get away from him super easy by walking to the ball pit. So that ends our night one endeavours, and we can move on to the second day. So, we start our day by going to school, watching some kids blow the yard up, before we ask the pie explosives later, and confront a very sad looking girl who's being bullied, who conveniently gives us an old scrapbook on how all the animatronics work. What a coincidence. We then go home and we have to escape the house again, which we can do by just unscrewing our window and heading to the pizza place. Now from this night onwards, I should explain how the rabbit works since he's going to start becoming an issue from this night onwards, as he can now freely roam around the building and we have to avoid him in order to survive. The main way that we can avoid him is by hiding. However, if we hide while he's too close, he will either find us and kill us, or we can flash him with our flashlight to prevent him from killing us. However, if we don't have batteries in our flashlight, well then we die. This is why finding batteries is so important, as we will have to do this multiple times. We obviously can't outrun the bunny, so we need to be trying to get to other rooms as soon as possible to prevent him from seeing us. Sometimes we will have to play a mini game in order to prevent the rabbit from catching us, which are all easy, so yeah. The hardest thing is just making sure that we are far enough away to prevent him from just instantly finding us or straight up killing us. This will get hard later, but for now, we just have to listen for footsteps in the room next to us and for breathing in the room that we are in. So we start off by following the sound of the kid crying to the kitchen, where Chica comes out from behind the door and chases us until we drop our lunch our mum made for us that morning. And Chica takes it and eats it. So now we have to find a way to lure the chicken out of the kitchen. And we can do that with pizza. So it's back to the normal world to get pizza. 
Although, Jeff is stingy and won't give me a slice about paying for it. So, instead of finding money, we go to the mill and get a rat trap, go to the ball pit, catch a rat and go release it in front of a Karen. We then steal the pizza, go back to Freddy's, throw the pizza into a trash pile, watch she could do the wiggle, and then free the child from the cabinet. We then have another chase with the rabbit, which is slightly more tight than the others, but still easily possible. However, tomorrow night will present our biggest challenge yet. We start our day getting bullied. Yay! We start hallucinating and get sent on an errand to get a book for the principal's office, which also gets us the sticky hand that we were bullied with earlier. Dylan is a bitch. Afterwards, we escape from the house with the front door because, I don't know, I'm just built different. Once in the Freddy world, we learn about a new feature that we can use which will make this whole challenge a bit easier. Vent transportation. Yes, yeah, so for whatever reason, we can now use the vents to move between different rooms. We can use the entrance vent to go to the storage vent and the party hall vent to get to the basement vent. This will be important later. There's also a vent that we can't reach which holds the key to the arcade, which we need to go to. However, we can get the key with the sticky hand from earlier. Yay! Once entering, we see Bonnie tying a kid to an arcade machine. So using our books, we decide that we have to fix Bonnie's guitar to get his attention. And which once again, requires us to go back to the normal world. I should say at this point, the no running aspect was starting to annoy me, since the amount of distance we have to travel makes no running really slow. But no running will soon become a nightmare. We go to the mill, get the strings, get bullied by Dylan, and it's trash in the gang, holy crap, let's f***ing go, <clears throat> sorry. Anyways, so we go back to the Freddy world, fix the guitar, plug it into the amp, and play a song to get Bonnie's attention. And this is where the first real challenge began. So for whatever reason, Bonnie f***ing books it to us so fast that we can't make it through the literal two rooms we need to in order to beat him. Once we make it through the basement door, we automatically make it to a cutscene. However, no matter how hard I tried, Bonnie always killed me just before I would make it through the door. The closest I got was opening the door, but Bonnie just runs so goddamn fast that we can never ever get to the door before we die. Now, I feel like there is a way to beat this, but for now, I'm going to run for just this one section and come back to it later to see if it's possible. So watch to the end to find out if this challenge is possible, because it's a doozy. Anyways, after that disaster, we crawl into the vent and Bonnie drives to drag us out, but we survive. Yay! We then make it back to the arcade, rescue the kitties being boinked over the head over and over by this bat. And then we get our path cut off by Freddy and we have to escape the rabbit. Now this chase was a bit harder than the others and I will admit I did tie to the rabbit a couple of times here. Just because the path we need to take is so precise. But after a few tries we manage to escape and that concludes night 3. Now before I go into night 4 I want to talk about a few new things we have to worry about going forward. It was technically an issue this night, but I never found it to be an issue until later on in the challenge, and that is Chica. Chica roams around the building the same as Pit Bonnie, and if they see us, they'll go into what's called an alarm state, which does the exact same thing as hitting an item that makes a ton of noise does, which is telling the rabbit exactly where we are, meaning that we need to book it and hide. Because Chica can go anywhere, we gotta be careful when in rooms close to the bunny. But anyways, with that info out of the way, on to night four. We start by going to school, having a psychedelic trip, and punching Dylan in his stupid f***ing face. Then we go to the pizzeria and follow the scream to the security office where we have Freddy this time blocking the door. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. This time we go have to go to the library and buy those explosives off the kid, which we can use a ton of different items for, but we can just use the Freddy mask that fell from the attic when we got the ladder earlier. We then go set off the firecracker to kill Freddy and find the kid trapped in the security room. After checking the cameras, we have to go distract the rabbit which just requires us to go into the arcade, hit an arcade machine, and then go back to find the child is gone. Checking the cameras, we can see that they are being taken to the kitchen and are locked in the freezer. So taking the hammer from the arcade, we smash the door open, wake the kid up, and once again get chased by the rabbit, which again, isn't hard to do. Damn, no running feels like it's going to be a cakewalk. Surely nothing will stop us now. <laughs> Okay, so night 5 is the most brutal night for a few reasons. 1. The checkpoint in this night sucks. If we die at any point, we are sent back to the house at the start of the level. So yeah, don't die. Secondly, the chases. Oh my god do they get harder. 
But before that, we have to go to Jeff's, which is now Freddy's, or we are tripping. I don't even know at this point. Anyways, we get the key from the ball pit room off Jeff since he locked it, and then enter the main chase. Pit Bonnie chases us all the way from the security room in the real world into Freddy's, and he's significantly faster. In order to beat this without running, you have to perfectly path to the ball pit room and immediately spam E to get through the actual locked door. Once we get into the Freddy world, we need to get as far away from Bonnie as possible, and the best way to do that is to get at least two rooms away, which is super hard to do because of how fast the rabbit is. I found that the tablecloths were pretty much useless, as he would always find me, and the best thing to do was either try and get into the storage room, or if I had enough distance, the cupboard in the kitchen. If he sees you go into any hiding spot but the tablecloth, he will just straight up kill you. This was super tricky, but I did manage to do it after a few tries. However, from this point on, we need to make sure that we never get caught by either the rabbit or the chicken, who will alert the rabbit straight away to where we are. So we now have to find our way to the basement through the vent, since the stage access is cut off. We then have to find the party room key, access the party room, and honestly that's the game done. From this point, there isn't any threat whatsoever besides if we mess up one button reaction. So we find the child, enter the party room vent to find our dad, who was taken away by the bunny, we follow it to the ball pit, knock the bunny out, get our dad through the ball pit, and then fucking die. The end. So there we are, into the pit without running. Well, not quite. Let's go back to that body section real quick, and let's see if we can beat it. So I spent a good three hours on this 15 second section to see if there was any way whatsoever to beat the section, but no matter what I did, Bonnie always killed me. It didn't matter how fast it was, he would always catch up. The one idea that could have worked was holding shift right as we got to the door, since we would go through it automatically. But that meant holding shift, which is technically running, even if it is for a second. So at this stage, it is not possible to beat into the pit without running. However, despite that sad outcome, I still feel like it may be possible. And I challenge you guys to try and beat it for yourself. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to do more of this game as I really enjoy it. And if at any point you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. I want to hit 50k by the end of the year. Actually, you know what? No, I want to hit 100k by the end of the year. Let's make it happen. Thank you all so much for your support recently. Check out my other challenge videos here. They are absolutely bangers. And I will see you in the next video.